This morning I read to you the scripture of the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verses 15 through 21. We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through the faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by undoing the works of the law. Because no one will be justified by the works of the law, but if in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been, been found to be sinners, is Christ then a certain servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law, the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. This is the word of the Lord. Wow is right. Uh, I don't know if I can follow that today. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you want to just tap your toes a little bit more and think about that song, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, we thank you both, Boyd and Dan, thank you, and Kelby for fitting in there. That's good. And Rod and Doris, thank you for your gift of music. Also, I didn't see Russ and Ginny were here, 60th anniversary. Russ, and just raise your hand there. Yep, so we want to recognize that as well. So. This, obviously, June is a month of anniversaries around here, so that was, uh, we've been celebrating those about every week, so that's a, a great thing to celebrate. Uh, we want to, uh, again, remind and are thankful for all those who helped with our Vacation Bible School, our music camp. It was a great uh, experience. If you just saw all the kids here all week long, uh, it was a rich and uh, warm experience. I want to thank Lynn Jones uh, for her work with the music camp and Michelle Van Hull, who is our children's ministry person. I want to thank her for all her extra heavy lifting. So if you could thank them for me as well, I, I know they would appreciate that as well. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of your word, and we thank you for the gift of the Apostle Paul, who in writing this church at Galatia reminds us of the gift of your free love, your grace that is poured out in each of our hearts and lives. So help us to be attentive and open to the power of your word as you speak to us in our each unique ways today. Amen. I want you to imagine that you are uh, traveling, uh, you're hiking in the desert and you've had a canteen that's kind of run empty, and it's towards the later part of the day, and you're getting thirsty and thirstier, and you run across a shack, and there by it is a pump. And so you decide, oh, there might be some water in it, so you go over to the pump, and there you uh, see this note, and it says, Dear friend, this pump is all right as of June 1932. I put a new sucker washer in it, and it should last for at least five years. But the washer dries out and the pump has to be primed, so under the white rock to the north, I've buried a bottle of water out of the sun and corked up. There's enough water in the bottle to prime the pump, but not if you take a drink first. Pour about one-fourth of the water and let it soak the leather washer, then pour in the rest medium past and pump like crazy, and you will get water. This well has never run dry. Have faith. Then when you've pumped all the water you need, fill the bottle, put it back where you found it for the next person who travels this path. Desert Pete. P.S. Don't go drinking up all the water first. Prime the pump and you'll get all the water you want. So now you're standing there after you have read this little note and you have a decision to make. 
Should I just drink this water? Because I'm really thirsty. Or should I trust that this pump will give me an unlimited source of water? Our sermon series is free to be, be alive in Christ. And we're looking at this book of Galatians and Paul's understanding in writing back to the Galatian church his understanding of the grace and mercy that we receive in God and Jesus Christ. Now he's a little upset as we've talked about the last couple of weeks. Initially he, uh, he went right to the action of there have been some Jewish Christians who have come to Galatia and there they have been telling the uh, Christians that Paul has introduce Christ to, that they have to become Jews first before they become Christians. And that was a completely opposite of what Paul told them. And so Paul is writing them because he has heard that some of this has been happening in the church at Galatia. And so he, uh, he begins to uh, write immediately how vehemently that is wrong. And in fact, writes and says, you know, really all, all we receive is there's nothing we can do to earn God's love. It comes to us freely. And God's grace comes to us freely. There's nothing we can do to earn it. And our response should be to be, a pleasing, be pleasing, to live pleasing lives to God. That's what we talked about two weeks ago. Last week, we talked about how Paul said, here's my reason for telling you my authority is that I met Christ on the Damascus Road. And that literally changed his life 180 degrees. He was steeped as a Pharisee in the tradition and understanding of the Christian faith. It was important to him, and yet here he was, life was turned upside down when he discovered that he didn't have to follow the law, but it was by God's grace. And in fact, today he continues by calling you and me to ministry, like Paul has been called. He begins in this passage talking about how we cannot be justified by the law. And what he means by the law is probably for most of us, as we understand it in the Old Testament, the core of the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments. That is the law. And, and that day, they were, everybody was striving to, to please God, to love God, to show God is that I would keep all of those commandments perfectly. But nobody was able to do that. It's impossible. It's impossible to do that. So then when we talk about justified, as Paul talks about here, he's almost talking about and using the metaphor uh, in the court of law. For an example, justified is a metaphor that the Greek root of that word means point out or show. So like in a courtroom, you prove or you show, you point out your understanding of the situation. The English root is right, which means straight, not crooked. A person is right when he conforms to a standard of acceptable character or conduct. The state or the quality of this conformity is righteousness or right living. Or another way we understand the word justified is on typesetting and, or even on a computer. When we justify, we make it straight. In doing so, that leads us to a way of light, right living. What Paul's arguing for is that the law is a part of that right living. We don't completely throw the law out, but it doesn't bring us salvation. It doesn't bring us into a right relationship with God. And so he's very disappointed with these Jewish Christians who have come and shared this understanding. And in fact, in Acts, when we read about how this whole situation occurred, uh, Peter and Barnabas, another companion of Paul's, were Jews, as Paul, but they would come to meetings where they were all Gentiles and they would sit and eat with them. But then when Jewish Christians had, or Gentile Christians were eating together, they would refrain from eating. And this upset Paul. He said, it's got to be one way or the other. You can't just live in two worlds, that of the law and that of being justified by faith in God, in Jesus Christ. Merle uh, Sengren is a psychology professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and he They've done some research that since 1945, uh, the, the cases of depression among American people has tripled. Now, I don't know if that's just because nobody talked about their depression before, and they do now, or how all this research came about. But one of the factors they believe it occurs is since World War II, we've become a country that has a lot of materials. We have a lot of things. We've become materialistic. And then if we don't reach those goals... 
In some ways, we become depressed about our situation. In some ways, we're trying to justify ourselves. We're trying to pull ourselves up and do it all for ourselves. Even when it comes to our relationship with God, we believe, well, if I just do all the right things and do the good things, then God will surely love me. But Paul reminds us again, there's nothing we can do to earn God's love. God's love flows freely to all of us. The grace and mercy of God and Jesus Christ flows into our lives and hearts. And as John Wesley said, justification by faith, which is kind of a churchy word, justification by faith is the door to in that, entering into that rich and deep relationship with God. And it all happened not because of what we've done, but what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ was obedient to God, even to the point of death, crucifixion, and yet rose again eternally. He is the one who had kept that law perfectly. And thus we become justified through Jesus Christ. Again, not pointing to what we are doing or our rituals or our practice. Those are all important for us in understanding and our relationship with God and showing how much God we love God. But it's not for the purpose of fulfilling or justifying our lives. Justification by faith is that door, that vehicle that helps us to understand what faith means. And in fact, faith means to trust God. That we completely trust God with all of our lives. And that's kind of a difficult thing for us to do because we tend to be people to be in control. We like to control. We like to see the outcome. We want to know what's going to happen. And yet we find time and time again that we have to surrender we have to give our trust to God. Literally be justified by faith in our relationship with God. Many of us have great fathers that we celebrate on this Father's Day. Sometimes there are some of us in this room whose our relationship with our fathers weren't all that great. But we always have had a picture in the church about how God as a father loves us and cares for us. A man was, his father was going to retire on the next Friday and he wanted to give his dad a great gift and he looked all over and thought, thought, and thought. Finally, he decided he was just going to write a list of thank yous and leave it on the table when his dad was going to go to work on the last day uh, of his working full time. He writes, thank you, dad. Thank you, dad, for waking up every morning when it was still dark outside and going to work while we slept in our warm beds for wearing the ugly paper tie I made you in first grade, for teaching me how to pray, for coming to all my Little League games and for keeping quiet when the other fathers wouldn't, for loving my mother with all your heart, for teaching me I can never say please and thank you too often, for taking me out for ice cream the night I struck out with a tying run on third, for giving me a hug when I badly needed one, for building that voice inside me that said no when I was tempted to get in the car after I'd been drinking. For helping me buy my first car. For telling me it's okay to cry. For being my hero and for being my friend. My friends, the theme and understanding of being justified frees us from having to think we have to earn God's love. God's love flows graciously and abundantly to each one of us. Paul's reminder to the church at Galatia is the rituals are important, but they don't make it help you get all the way to that deep and rich relationship with God and Jesus Christ. So you're standing there right by the pump, the well. Now you could take sips of that little water and that would satisfy you for a little while. But maybe you should trust and pour out the water on that leather and begin to pump like crazy and get all that water that is deep and rich. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you love us completely. That you are head over heels in love with us as your people. And we know it is important for us to, to live that right life. 
But we know as we stand at the door, we understand Paul's call to us to be justified by faith in trusting you with our lives. By surrendering all who we are and all that we have to you. That we may truly be people of faith. So bless us this day and in this week, for we ask this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.